Are messy character controllers driving you crazy? Do you have spaghetti code every time you add a new ability? Today, we're going to be talking about the one pattern that will clean up your code forever, and it takes less than 10 minutes to implement. So what we're doing today is building a clean, reusable, finite state machine for character states in Godot 4. We're focusing on character movement today, but finite state machines are super useful for a number of things. You can use this same pattern for character and enemy behavior, game flow management, dialogue systems, weapon states, enemy phases, UI menus, animation controllers, or even managing different game modes. By the end of this video, you're going to be ready to throw finite state machines in every game you work on. Welcome back to JD Does Dev. I'm JD, let's do some dev. So what is a finite state machine? Well, a finite state machine, or FSM as the cool kids say, does exactly what it says on the tin. Finite means there's a set number. State is the state of the object it's attached to. And machine is what handles the transition between different states. So to start off with, I'm gonna show that we have just a basic character scene setup. Nothing fancy, character body 2D with a sprite and collision shape, and a floor. We're going to add three simple states, idle, walking, and jumping. But with the way a FSM works, it could have any number of states attached. The key is creating a system that's easy to extend later. So let's start by creating our base script. And this one is going to be our state. We'll extend node, last name state. Now we are going to use this to create some virtual methods. In Godot, virtual methods are things like ready, physics process, process, that override methods way up in the tree. However, we're gonna create our own. So we have a few that our states can override. Enter, exit, update, physics update, and handle input. Now we're also going to need a reference to the state machine, but we haven't created that object yet. Just so we don't forget it, let's go ahead and put it in here. There we go. So let's save that and we have our base state. So let's go over what these core methods do. Enter is for initialization, exit for cleanup, update for frame logic, physics update for movement, and handle input for player input. Child states only need to override what they actually use, so we don't need to put all of these in each of our states. Now let's go ahead and create our state machine. Give it a class name. There are a few variables that we need to set. First, we need an initial state, so export our initial state. We also need to know what our current state is, and then we need a list of our existing states. The state machine is where we're going to override or redirect the virtual functions or virtual methods to our states. So let's just put those in there now. And one additional change state. Now, because these are virtual functions in the state machine, we need to direct them over to the virtual functions in our states. But first, we need to get a list of our states. So let's register all of them. All right, so what we're doing here is for child and get children, if child is state, then we add its name to the state's dictionary. Then we assign that child to this state machine. So we set that variable. If we look back at state, we can now uncomment this and have our state machine. Now we need to start with an initial state, which is where we have our export up here on line five. There we go. We change the state right off the bat from ready to initial state name to lower. Now in process, that's where we're going to do updates. So let's go ahead and if current state, then we run the current state update function. We're going to do pretty much the same thing here with physics process input. And then we need to make our change state function, which is going to use our exit and enter virtual methods. So current state equals states get new state name to lower and just to make sure if we have it, current state, enter. So here we go. The state machine automatically registers the child states here, handles the current states methods, and provides a clean way to transition between states. Now let's create the states themselves. I'm gonna create a couple scripts here. Create new, an idle state, a walk state, and finally a jump state. Now let's start off with the idle state. First, we're going to be extending state, last name, idle state and let's just check to make sure that we are in the idle state and give us a little bit of information as it's running now we're also going to override the handle input event now one thing that we could do is go over to the state here copy 
paste this in and add our logic in there. That might be a little bit easier, less likely to, to have typos. And here we're just going to add our general input to make sure if there is input happening, then we go to the correct state. So if input, so if we're doing move left, if it's one of these, then we want to go to our walk state. Now notice that we have it too lower here, walk state. We could get around this by changing class name to idle or walk, or we could change the names in the scene explorer here. But for now, just to keep things simple, we're gonna keep it like this. Now, if that's not the case, now if action just pressed, jump right there. So that is our idle state. Now we could add other things here. We could add in animations while idling in different functions on our enter. We could start the, we could start idle animation on exit. We could stop the idle animation. A lot of things we could put in here and that we could do that with any of the states. But let's go over now to our walk state and state. And then we're going to put in our general walking logic and we need to transition to the jump state if we jump while walking. So let's add that in too. So if you see what we're doing here, physics update is basically being called by our state machines physics process because we're updating here and we're using our current state. And so we're doing our walking logic in here. If we're not moving, if there's no direction, then we change the state to idle state and we do the regular move and slide. However, if we're walking and we jump, then we go to the jump state. And that's the next one that we're going to edit here. So our enter function here, first thing that we're gonna do, get the parent, which is our character, and then set the velocity Y, which is gonna make it jump. Truthfully, right now, this logic doesn't matter. We're looking at what the state machine can actually do and how it works, but it's good to know a little bit of what's going on. And then we add in our physics update and here we go. So if after we have the velocity, we update it, we apply the gravity, we check to see if there's movement, do move and slide. And if we land, then we change to either idle state or walk state. Now, one thing that's nice is we could take any of these and pull out these, these numbers, these hard coded numbers and put them into variables up here. And we're keeping our constants directly within the code that they directly affect. We're making it very modular. We're making it very easy to change only what needs to be changed. So how do we actually use this? Well, let's go into our character body. We're going to first add in a state machine, and then we're going to add our states in here. Idle state, jump state, and walk state. Now we need a default state or initial state. We're going to do that with our idle state. Now everything's wired up here. We have our three state nodes as children. We have our initial state set as the idle state and we're ready to test it out. Let's save, cross our fingers. You can see here, we're entering idle state and we've got movement. So it acts just as it would if we were doing everything in that spaghettified code like this, all this stuff. But we have everything very modular, very easy to use and we could add extra states. Let's just say, we wanted to add a fall state. We could have it physics update. If the, the gravity changes, if the character movement is going down towards the floor, character velocity y is greater than zero, then no, we haven't created the falling state, but that's as simple as it would be. And then we just create the falling state, change the animation there, and boom, we've got another state. It's very, very easy to use this. And there you have it, a clean, extensible, finite state machine. Now, remember, this, this pattern isn't just for character controllers. You can adapt it for AI enemies that patrol, chase, and attack. Use it for your dialogue system with states like listening, speaking, waiting, thinking. Maybe a weapon system with idle, firing, reloading, overheated. So many things. With the character system, we could add attack, dash, wall slide, coyote jump, whatever. Just by creating the new scripts that extend state. Each state manages its own logic and transitions. Try building your own states and let me know what you create. Thanks for watching. If you'd like this, feel free to click the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. And please leave a comment. Let me know what you think and if, what you'd like the next tutorial to be on. And don't forget, I also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jddoesdev. Hope to see you over there and take care.